So, I, and the, the first slide uh, that just says Bill Fontana, Acoustical Visions, has two uh, quotations that are kind of very important to my uh, way of thinking about my artistic practice. Maybe the most important one is from Marcel Duchamp. Uh, when I was a student in New York in the late 60s, I, I had taken a class that John Cage was teaching called Experimental Music Composition. And that was a real turning point in my life because I was 21 years old at the time. And I had these ideas that, uh, made, that I think were like maybe for, for some people, especially in the music world that I had come from, a bit strange. I had this idea that the act of listening was a way of making music. And of course, John Cage had a very positive reaction to this idea, but I had become uh, obsessed with listening and recording sounds. And up in 1968, there was also a really important exhibition in New York at the Museum of Modern Art called The Machine Show. And it was the first time in my life I'd seen in person any of Marcel Duchamp's work. And in particular, a work called The Bride Street Bear, but her bachelor's even nicknamed The Large Glass. And for that work, he had produced a box of notes and statements. And, and that one statement that you can see on the screen, screen musical, musical sculpture, sculpture, sounds lasting and leaving from different places, forming and sounding a sculpture that lasts. When I read that statement from Duchamp, that's when I started to call my work sound sculptures. And uh, I, I, since, since, since the late 60s, 60s for me, that, that concept represents, represents the idea of how uh, sounds in a given situation, situation can, can be configured in a meaningful way. way. Uh, and <clears throat> I, 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 I've, I've used, used this medium in a great variety, variety of situations all over the world in museums <clears throat> and public spaces to alter how uh, the real spaces that someone is in uh, create meaningful listening experience. Um, next slide. And you see, you see on this next slide a picture of a Buddhist temple bell, and you see some uh, some 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 poems. Uh, I one of the ideas from Cage that was very important with his famous silent piano piece, uh, four minutes and thirty three seconds, is the idea of the sound of silence, because because silence is the space in which we enter to listen and hear hear the world. And so I, I had the opportunity in the mid 1980s to live in Japan and became really interested in uh, these magnificent historic Buddhist temple bells I saw in Kyoto and other places in Japan. And I started making recordings of the sounds the bells make when they're not ringing, putting acoustic microphones inside the cavity of the bell, but also starting to put vibration sensors on the, <clears throat> on the material of the bell. And I actually, I was going to ask you if you could jump to the last slide, number 25. Are you able to do that? Yep. Yes, yes, yes. stop, stop. Okay. So I'd, I'd, like you to, I'd like you to play this. It's a short video. And it's a current project I'm doing in Paris. Uh, uh, that has to do with Notre Dame. <clears throat> I, you know, in my interest in, uh, in, in, in how obje objects like bells are kind of see alive and vibrating all the time in reaction <clears throat> to the sounds around them, this idea seemed particularly <clears throat> interesting to me in Paris because the most famous silent bells in the world are the 10 bells of Notre Dame that can't ring at the moment. <clears throat> and I'm doing a, developing a media art project about, about the silence of these, these bells. And so, so, so uh, the video that's put in here is from the most famous of Notre Dame's bell, bells named Emmanuel, a bell from the 17th century.
Are you playing that video? Yes. So, Alon, if you could go to slide number three. Uh, I've had a lot of, done a lot of work uh, using an acoustic measuring technology that structural engineers use called accelerometers. An accelerometer is like the scientific version of a guitar pickup. It's a piezoelectric transducer. That was the kind of sensor I put on this large bell in Notre Dame. Uh, and I, in 2006, I did a project in the turbine hull tape modern called Harmonic Bridge, in which I turned the Millennium Bridge, which sits in front of the tape, into a kind of a live musical instrument by installing a network of these kind of sensors on the cable structure of the Millennium Bridge. So if you go to slide four, you can actually see and hear, hear that. Can you go to slide five, please? Slide five is a project I, I had also done with a bridge, a very different kind of bridge, a large uh, suspension bridge in Lisbon um, that uh, sits very close to a new contemporary art museum called MAP, Museum of Art, Architecture, and Technology, which is at the entrance of Lisbon's uh, harbor. And I, I did a live streaming uh, kind of audio video installation there with, with a network of microphones and accelerometers on the, on the, on the bridge itself. That it, it also had live, live and recorded video. And um, it was this large scale immersive installation in this really, really large uh, exhibition gallery <clears throat> at, at MAP. So if you, Go to slide six, please. What one? I had I had a live camera on the top of one of the uh, the bridge's towers. Uh, and if you go to slide seven, you can see a composite of, th of, of three different recordings of how the video looked and sounded from the top, top of, the, of this bridge. You go to slide eight, you see a statement about a, uh, an exhibi exhibition I had done in, in the Venice Architecture Biennale in 2018 that was uh, commissioned by an NGO from Abu Dhabi called the International Renewable Energy Agency. And it was an exhibition about uh, different sources of uh, renewable energy. Uh, that I've recorded in different places in Europe, uh, America, and Asia. And uh, one, er one aspect of renewable energy that was very interesting to film and record were geothermal power plants. So if you, you look at slide nine, please, 
That's a, uh, an audio video recording I made in Tuscany, where the first uh, geothermal power plants in the world were built in 1906. And the countryside uh, in Tuscany near, the, near this power plant was kind of amazing. You just see these vents of steam everywhere just rising out of the ground. And in this video, the sound is from an accelerometer that's buried in the landscape. So you hear how the movement of the geothermal energy in the earth, and then you see, you know, you see this uh, layer of video of the steam. If you go to slide 10, that's a, uh, <clears throat> that's a view of a geothermal cooling tower that uh, I, <clears throat> that I <clears throat> that, that I quite, uh, quite want. And then, uh, if you go to uh, a, 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 on another take on climate change, if you go to slide number uh, 19, I did a public art project in Miami Beach in Florida where the issues of rising sea level are very, uh, it's a very critical issue. And there's a, <clears throat> there's a building in Miami Beach called the New World Symphony. The architect for that building is Frank Gehry. <clears throat> and I, I, I created a permanent public art project in that park uh, that is based entirely on different recordings, audio video recordings I made at the South Florida coastline. And so, uh, <clears throat> video from slide 19, you can see how it looked projected on this uh, video wall. You know, here are some of the examples of this, of this slide. Can you also play slide 22, please? This, this is another uh, audio video work from the Miami Project. Now, if you could uh, show the slide, slide 23. It's a text about uh, a large exhibition I had not far from where you are in the city of Graz in Austria, a museum called the Kunsthaus Graz, which uh, also has a very large main exhibition space. And there's an exhibition focused also on the issues of climate change in the environment. And if you could uh, play slide 24, it, it, it documents how, <clears throat> how this exhibition of us looked and sounded.
So if um, we, we can pause this, if any of you have, have any questions. Any questions? Uh, thank you for this presentation. It was fantastic. Just one question. You have to know the context to be able to understand the drama of a situation. It's not just any beach, it's in Florida, it's not any bell, it's in Notre Dame. If you don't have the context, you may not read the sound the way it should be read. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think the context is very important because all of these projects were very site-specific to the context in which they which they were created. They're not just isolated examples of sounds and images. Other questions? Okay, okay. I think there's... Can you can you speak up a little bit? About the editing of uh, the yes. sound edit is this, uh, if you have like a edit uh, an editing process in the sound that you uh, make us listen to, and if you have like some uh, editing um, uh, process in the images, because I, I it's like if I feel that the the way you work in the sound or images as are not. Uh, similar in a way, so I was wondering uh, if you have like a difference of statue uh, 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 in between like images and sound. Well, all the all the editing with the uh, you know the sound and the images I've done in my studio in uh, San Francisco. When I'm traveling, I do my laptop computer becomes my portable editing studio and. Um, I think uh, I'm interested in, uh, in the editing process in evoking a sense of uh, deconstructing the normal perception of time and, uh, and uh, exploring, trying to create uh, results in the editing process that enable a viewer and listener to become really present and engaged with what they're seeing seeing and hearing and so that's uh, kind, of, kind of generally how I'm, I'm approaching it and the tools I have are the tools, tools you have, have. I mean, there's, there's great, great editing, editing software, software of course for, for sound, sound. Uh, my, my favorite, favorite one personally for the multi-channel <coughs> mix is is a program made by Steinberg called New Window which I really I, I really like and, and and Steinberg also makes this amazing audio interface that, uh, called a uh, I suppose an AXR something or other, but it has a maximum sampling rate of 384 kilohertz, which is really interesting because um, it is possible to sometimes experiment in the editing with doing interesting time shifts uh, with, with the file. I had done a, a, I'm working on a sound project in Austin, Texas. And in the summertime in Austin, one of, one of the most dominant uh, features of natural sound are bats. There are caves in Texas where you have populations of millions of bats. And so I made ultrasonic recordings of bats and then was able to time shift and actually hear their echolocating calls. Any more questions? Thank you very much to, uh, for, for your talk, and uh, I'm a little bit uh, too mystical, so. So I had a question, after all these 
big, big project and all the research you've done with the sound, is there one project that is the one that you not like the most, but the one that you think is the most, the, not the biggest or something, but the one that you prefer, the one that you could work a lifetime on, or is there a project that you still want to do that has artist kind? Um, I, th I think uh, every project I'm working on, I fall in love with. I fall in love with the ideas, and, and it's like, um, <clears throat> and so the project that I'm in love with right now is in Paris with Notre Dame. And the idea that I can uh, have the opportunity to access the uh, Notre Dame worksite, climb around to the bell towers, uh, and plan what will ultimately become a large uh, exhibition project opening in Paris next summer is, you know, that's, I, you know, that's, that's my passion at the moment because it's taking, takes so much energy and effort to do this, not only with the technical issues of trying to install a live sensor network in a medieval bell tower that, that was partially damaged in a fire, but also dealing with the bureaucracy of French, French ministry <laughs> and all that. So, so but, 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 so, but, but, but basically, there's been so many projects I've done that I've loved doing, the one in Lisbon, the one in Graz, the one in Miami, uh, the one in the Tate Modern. And every one of them, in, in order for me to do them, it's really like having a love affair idea. And that's kind of been the story of my life. I have maybe one question. Um, You've listened to the world for so long, such a long time uh, through uh, architecture or different kind of possibilities offered by the environment. I'm very impressed by the, the work uh, with the, the bells and uh, how silence uh, is listening to the world somehow. But time-wise, do you feel there is um, what 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 has radically change when, uh, since when you start uh, in the sense of listening to the world, not only in the results, but maybe in the making of it, or I don't know, what could be also useful in your experience for us to understand how to keep going I, with the way to listen I, to the world? I, well, you know, in my, in my studio in San Francisco, I have this enormous archive, every sound I've ever recorded in the last 50 years is, is within the walls of the studio. It's this, and I, I feel like whenever, I, whenever I'm listening to a sound, uh, it, I feel like the history of all my listening and pattern recognition is sort of in my brain. And, and, and so uh, the older I become, the more interesting everything is to hear. You know, I'm never bored just walking down the street, being somewhere, and just my brain has learned to tune in and recognize uh, patterns of sound. And uh, and you know, and, and you know, and in 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 my studio, uh, as I've had a lot of time here during the pandemic to try to organize uh, this listening history that I have here, uh, <clears throat> it it it. It, it, it just, uh, I, 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 I guess I just feel very connected all, all the time to where I am. And there's, and I feel like uh, just so many times just walking around, being alive, being somewhere, I'm making imaginary recordings. I, I pretend that I'm a digital recording device and I'm really just listening and recognizing a unique moment in time. Thank you very much. Any more questions? No. No. Thank you for your contribution.